Okay, let's finally talk about the new Skana, since we are at a point now where we can actually see how powerful the champion truly is. After the Skana rework went live, Skana's win rate absolutely tanked. People apparently had no idea how to play him at first, and this is completely normal for a new champion. However, over time it became clear that the new Skana has absolutely everything he could have ever dreamed of. And while the old Skana was primarily played as a jungler, the reworked Skana actually excels as a top laner, being able to bully squishy and tanky lane opponents alike with his rather flexible laning strategies. Don't get me wrong, the new Skana still sees play in the jungle, and especially his E spell is a top tier ganking tool, certainly a strong flex pick. But top lane Skana is truly something else, and the utility and playmaking potential he provides during late game teamfights is also quite ridiculous. In this video, we will cover the two dominating strategies for Skana in the top lane, allowing you to adapt to your matchups. And we'll cover everything, from rune and item choices all the way to real in-game situations and how to navigate them. And watching an educational video like this one is a good first step to becoming a better player, but if you truly want to take your solo queue experience to the next level, I recommend getting a private challenger coach from my sponsor Solo Q Solution. With their Coaching to Diamond program, Solo Q Solution have already helped lots of players to reach their dream rank of high elo, even if they'd been hardstuck silver for years. And it is a simple concept. Because League of Legends is such a deep and intricate game, players who are hardstuck don't even know what it is that they're doing wrong. But the challenger coach with years of experience can identify the problem for you and give you all the tools and knowledge you need to start climbing again. League of Legends is a game of skill at the end of the day, and any skill can be taught and learned. Of course, you also need to be an active solo queue player in general in order to implement what you learn during the coaching sessions, but if you play solo queue at least 15 hours per week, you are an ideal candidate for the coaching program. If you're interested, you can book your first session right away with a link in the video description, and now the advertisement is over. So Skana has two keystones you can choose from, Arcane Comet and Grasp of the Undying. The rule of thumb is that Arcane Comet is better against squishy poke champions with poor sustain, since you can just poke them out yourself, while Grasp of the Undying allows you to scale harder while also bullying melee champions out of lane in extended trades. However, some Skana players also just commit to one rune page and play it every game to great success, and the choice is ultimately up to you. The Arcane Comet rune page uses, well, Arcane Comet, but then Manifold Band, Transcendence and Scorch, with Second Wind and Overgrowth secondary. The idea of this rune page is, of course, to pressure the enemy in lane as much as possible, and Arcane Comet in combination with Scorch are the perfect tools for this. The easiest and most consistent way to trigger them for Skana is his W spell, as you will see during the analysis, but also his Q spell does provide a lot of poke damage on top, which can get really oppressive real quick. Mana for Band needs a little bit of time to stack, so during the early early lane phase you can still run Oom, but once it is stacked it is also a very valuable rune that will keep you topped off during trades, and also later in the game during teamfights you will never truly run out of mana which can be a problem for the grasp page. The last rune on the sorcery path you want to take is Transcendence, since cooldown reduction also gives you more access to your disruption tools and teamfights, it is rather a scaling rune you don't really need it early game, but in the late game it can do quite a bit. As I've said, this page is chosen to bully other lane bullies out of lane essentially, so they will try to trade back against you most of the time, thinking of a rumble top lane for example, so second wind is mandatory to heal off their poke damage. In addition to second wind, many players go for overgrowth in order to scale better into the late game with tank stats, but shield bash is also quite nice with his W, and also with thimble winter should you pick that. It is kind of a shame though that you can only get two resolve runes with this one. And this is also a big upside for the grasp of the undying rune page. In addition to Grasp of the Undying, you get all three Shield Bash, Bone Plating and Overgrowth, with Biscuit Delivery and Approach Velocity secondary. Yes, here we have Bone Plating instead of Second Wind, because once more you pick this rather into melee matchups. However, if you want to just pick Grasp of the Undying every single game, it is still advisable to pick Second Wind in ranged matchups and Bone Plating where you can really brawl against the enemy tank. Biscuit Delivery is certainly stronger for the early game than Manaful Band, because you get your mana right away, whereas Manaful Band only starts triggering once you get it fully stacked. This ensures you have plenty of access to your spells during those extended trades, which you will have to take in some matchups. 
Approach Velocity is very nice for Skana because it scales quite well with movement speed, allowing you to follow up when your allies engage, but also crucially in lane, when you land your W, you slow the enemy with a shockwave, and then you can run up to trigger grass with the Undying. Approach Velocity makes it very consistent, but it also works without the runes, so some players pick Cosmic Insight or go on an entirely different path. But yeah, these are the general ideas when it comes to rune pages, so let's now talk about the item build. And the items don't really differ between the rune pages, no matter if you choose Grasp or Arcane Comet, you will go for the same build. Well, I should rather say for the same build concept or build idea, because tank itemization is of course never formulaic, you have to adapt to the enemy threats. Okay, so Skana's starting item is always Doran's Ring, mainly because you want the mana regeneration. Skana uses his spells during the lane phase a lot, and running out of mana would be catastrophic. Doran's Ring though is the perfect mix of combat stats and mana regen, so this is the item to go. Now should you be one of the players who fancy the item Fimble Winter, your build looks like this. You go for an early tier of the Goddess, then your first full item is either Sunfire Aegis against physical damage or Hollow Radiance against magic damage. Your boot choice can be Steel Caps, Mercury Trats or Lucidity Boots, depending on if you need more tankiness or if you want more, well, let's say offense, because Lucidity Boots gives you more access to your offensive spells. And then finally you upgrade your tier to Fimble Winter. This is a very good Skana core build that covers many angles, but some players don't really like the tier power trough and skip this item in favor of an early uh, hard steal for the most part, because the earlier you get hard steal the better. However, especially for beginners, I highly recommend the tier build with Thimble Winter because it's very consistent and also very forgiving in terms of spell usage. Now after your core builds, you of course also have to look who are the enemy threats, do they deal physical damage, do they deal magic damage, and against physical damage you have multiple options. Iceborne Gauntlet, Thornmail, and Unending Despair are the most common ones. But there are of course a number of armor items which are all viable, and you really have to look at the enemy team and see what you need in order to counter them. Against magic damage your itemization is a little more straightforward, because the only really viable items are Kainik Rukan and Abyssal Mask. The main reason for this is that Kainik Rukan is just such a hard stop to any form of magic damage, that this item is pretty much a fix all solution. Against more balanced teams, if you need mixed resistances, of course you can go for an additional hard steal even if you already have Fimble Winter, but also Jaxxar the Protean is the perfect item in these scenarios, especially since you have so much HP to begin with. Keep in mind, the more HP you have, the more valuable armor and magic resist get, and vice versa. Okay, with that being said, let's jump right into the analysis. We'll go over both, the Grasp of the Undying strategies and the Arcane Comet strategies. Of course, with Arcane Comet and Scorch, Skana wants to pressure his lane opponent right from the start, and the spell that enables this is your W. The AoE Shockwave is impossible to dodge once you are close enough, and the slow guarantees that Arcane Comet connects as well. However, after you put your W on cooldown, the enemy gets quite the generous window to trade back against you. Once your shield wears off, you are quite vulnerable, so be careful. Nevertheless, once you also throw your Q into the mix, the poke damage gets really oppressive. Yes, it is quite telegraphed with the boulder animation, but Q is still a high range projectile with respectable damage, and many top laners can't do anything but back off here, giving you a lot of agency in lane. The one thing you must be careful with though, is your mana usage. Your mana flow band is not yet fully stacked, and you don't have your tier, so the only mana region you get is from Doran's Ring so far. You can run out of mana if you spam too much, and then you'd be really vulnerable. But later in lane, when Mana Flow Band is active, this will not be a problem anymore, for the most part at least, even should you choose to play an item built without tier or later Fimble Winter. And a quick word about your E spell in lane, you can try to cheese your opponent and push them into your tower, but this only works when the enemy is not ready for it. Most opponents will either be careful enough with their positioning, or just be as tanky as you. Okay, so when you play Grasp of the Undying, your W is not as important offensively. Without the payoff of triggering Comet and Scorch, it just doesn't do much, which makes Q your preferred level 1 spell. A very basic trading pattern is to get your Grasp ready on the wave, and then walk up to trigger Grasp as well as connecting the 3 empowered Q hits. The percent HP damage from your passive and Q is very good against tanky opponents, and stacking Grasp as much as possible will make your late game stronger too. This is also where you can get good value from Approach Velocity if you took it. After slowing with W, walking up to trigger Grasp is almost free. And don't forget, just because W is not a good poking tool here, well, your Q boulder still very much is. Thanks to the percent HP damage, the spell hits quite hard even without Comet and Scorch. One striking difference to the comment page is, however, that you will brawl a lot more in melee range in grasp matchups, and here your E is actually a super valuable trading tool.
The combination of survivability, CC, and percent health damage, especially with her passive, turns Grasp Skana into a strong scaling tank champion that can also counter enemy tanks in lane. But enough about the lane phase, the point where Skana can truly unlock his disruptive potential is teamfighting in the mid and late game. His E passing through terrain is a real game changer here, giving you unique engage angles that can be hard to cover for the enemy. As you can see, Skana can set up some truly nasty plays here, but come on, is there anything nastier than this interaction with Poppy ulti? I mean, <laughs> it's, it's probably very logical, but it's, it's just really unfair for the poor Swain. By the way, it is of course true that Grasp Skana will be a lot tankier than Comet Skana at this stage of the game, but the difference is not that big. Your tankiness comes from your items first and foremost, so Comet Skana too will have lots of opportunities to apply his AoE crowd control and disrupt his prey. Fortunately, however, Skana's teamfighting potential is enhanced to the maximum when you fight near the game-winning objectives of Baron or Dragon. The close terrain and the fact that the enemy team are clumped together makes it very easy to connect your stun and also to snatch multiple targets at once with your R, and suppressing even one enemy can already be decisive. However, there is one crucial advantage the Comet rune page still has over the Grasp rune page, even when it comes to late game teamfighting. Since Comet uses Mana Flow Band, you will effectively never lose access to your spells, even in longer fights. The Grasp page, on the other hand, can find itself in situations where all you have left is auto attacking. But this is not even as big of a deal as it might seem. Auto attacks can still trigger your keystone and reapply your passive for its percent HP damage, so the enemy are never simply able to ignore you. Nevertheless, Grasp Skana is still the ultimate late game power fantasy. And when you can start the fight with plenty of mana for all your spells, well, this 1v3 here speaks for itself. Skana just has everything a modern champion in League of Legends needs. Crowd control on all of his spells, two of which being suppression displacement tools, because why not? And another tank champion with a similarly, let's call it modern toolkit, is Kaysante, and my Kaysante video should be clickable on your screen right now if you're interested. 